20,000 people. You're the main event. All the eyes are on you. Before you know it, you're going out there and you're not relaxed enough. You're not really mentally accepting the challenge. You lose everything. You lost, you lost everything in, in, in the dressing room. You lost everything going up the, up the ring. And, and you're just, everything you do is just fast pace, fast pace. And, and um, I don't think you're going to see that this time around. I think Jake Paul's going to be a lot more relaxed. I think he's going to go out there and, and, and uh, pick his shots, uh, not be so jittery. And uh, on the other hand, as, as you well, let, let me just leave it there. I'll let you guys go. You tell me your part, and then I'll tell you what I think Tyron's going to do. Uh, Woodley is like going to Jack in the Box. You don't really want to. We're go talking there. about. You really don't want to go there to eat, but it's always Jake. open. It's always open. So no matter what, you're going to get the food and you're going to be disappointed. It's not going to be as good as other fast food restaurants. I'm telling you. He is not going to perform. It's going to be the same Happy Meal, the Tyron Woodley Happy Meal. You get a watered down soda, you get a dry burger, and you get some stale fries. He is not going to produce. No matter how many chances he gets, he is not going to deliver. Okay, Glenn. What do you got? I'm kind of thinking about the $500,000 knockout clause. He might go for it. You know, he might go for it for once. He might go early. He, he already knows what the punches feel like coming back from Jake Paul. So um, I think he might go for it early, especially if he's offered that $500,000 bonus. It's not a... $50,000 fight of the night bonus. It's like half a million dollars. You get a free house if you knock the guy out. I got to say, Javier, how motivated would you be? I mean, so they never had that kind of money back when you fought. But if somebody offered you half a million dollars to knock a guy out, how would that affect your fighting style? Big time. Big time? Big time. You would come in like fire, like beyond fire? It would motivate you that much more, yes, of course. But now my question to you guys is, see, so we don't we don't script anything on this show. If we yep. would have, we would have just, I did Jake Paul, and I was going to do Woodley next. What does Tony do? Woodley. What do you do? Woodley. So now I'm going Woodley. You have to go Jake Paul, and you have to go Jake Paul. Okay? Don't be going back and forth. Okay, now, Woodley, he's been training to fight. He said he was going to fight four times next year. So, he, you know, he's not a person that likes to talk crap. He talks what he believes, and he does the work like always. And, and, and he's, he's one of the great ones for a reason because he was a champion, and he's got champion mentality. Um, so he's been training to fight. It wasn't like he was out of shape. Uh, uh, Len, you hit it on the nail. I think money is a huge motivator for him because he's made more money now not being in the UFC than he was in the UFC. And, and he's not fighting the kind of competition he was back then. So for me, watching the fight, I did watch the fight completely, and I did feel he lost. But I felt he lost because of one reason, inactivity. You know, he was inactive. And then when he did hurt Jake, and he was coming after Jake, Jake hit him with the left hook, and he stopped, completely stopped. He stopped. So for me, if Woodley can get past that stage and not go back to the old well like Tony's talking about, I, I think, uh, you know, we could very well see uh, – we're definitely going to see a different fight, but we could definitely see a different outcome, and I could definitely see a trilogy coming out of this because, let's face it, whether we whether you like it or you're not liking it because you're not a fan of either of those guys, they are the talk at the present time. They are the bigger pay-per-view draws out of the majority of the people that are fighting right now, and, and the numbers speak for themselves. You know, it's going to be a bombard of a fight, I feel. The first fight, I think, was very interesting – and I think that uh, Tyron's definitely going to come after him. Let, let's see how Jake handles it. If Jake does not change from what he did last time, my prediction is Tyron's going to run him over. Boom. And the spotlight's on you, T. You know, history just repeats itself. When a guy is always smiling, touching gloves, doesn't throw a lot of punches. It's the same old thing, man. It's like a sequel to a bad movie. You know, it's just a remake. Everybody sees in Tyron what he doesn't see in himself. And he's going to go to the big game. He's going to be like James Harden. He's good in regular season, but when it comes to the playoffs, he's going to have more turnovers than anybody. Lynn. Well 
Okay. Vin. So I'm going to chime in. Look, I, stop. I think. Stop. What? We talked about, you're supposed to talk about Jake Paul. Tony talked about Tyron again. He didn't talk oh. about Jake Paul. Oh. <laughs> what? See, <laughs> Duck, Duck, <laughs> Goose. My phone's almost fucking dead. Look, I gotta plug in real quick. Hold See, look, he's gonna right, go. He's gonna. Talk he's talk gonna go. Paul. Podcast Paul. Okay, from Jake the restroom. Paul. Jake, it's Jake Paul, not not Tyron. Okay. See how we were right. talking about Tyron? Stop. Okay. I'm, go, I'm right, going back Jake to Jake Paul. Paul. I think he's okay. got confidence. All right, I Jake think, Paul. I think he's felt, uh, you know, big boy power from UFC, like what that feels like, and from other, you know, people <laughs> that are hard hitters. And I think once you get past that and you get your confidence and you keep growing with your training. I think he's going to be better suited for the next fight. I think it still favors him. But I do think that uh, there's that question mark. Is, does the money motivate, you know, his opponent to knock him out? But it's not going to be that easy because he's not going to let it. He's already gotten a look at Tyron. So I don't know if you've ever fought anybody for a second time and things went differently. Did you ever have that in your experience as a fighter, Hob? Uh Yeah, I fought a guy three times. Uh, every time I fought him, I beat him up worse. Yeah. And yeah. what did you learn? Why? Why? What was it you were seeing? You were seeing more the openings reason, every time? The reason why I beat him up worse every time is because every time he wanted a rematch with me, it pissed me off that he thought he could beat me, so I trained harder. <laughs> I was like, oh, man, this guy wants to fight me. The, what the hell? No, I trained harder. I trained harder, and I was more focused. Every time I fought him, I was more focused. I trained harder, and I, and I, and I, made, a, I made a statement. Then the third time, I made a statement so bad, I, I, I basically outclassed him really bad, really bad. And I stopped him within less than a minute, you know, the, the third time out. And it's because of that one reason, you know, um, because he, he, was, he what? It's like I feel insulted that he wanted to fight me again because I thoroughly beat him the first time. That's a, that's a really interesting thing. I bet no one ever knew that. So what are your thoughts, Tony, on uh, why Jake could do better or worse this time? Well, the sports book, had, they have Jake Paul – uh, a bigger favorite this time. And Woodley is definitely taking the fight on a shorter notice. Mm. And a lot of MMA fighters train for boxing with MMA guys. So that makes them an MMA boxer in a boxing match instead of a boxer in a boxing match. And MMA guys just don't throw enough punches when they go to regular boxing. The punch output is way too low. It's different. It's different when you switch. It's different when you switch sports. It's different when you switch workouts. It takes your body time to acclimate. I mean, I'll give you a great example. I used to, I, you know, in the Navy, I get to work out with some SEALs. Their, their workout was 100 times more than what we did in boot camp. But I was doing weights, and I go, oh, that was great at weightlifting. But when I tried to switch over to a different sport, it whooped my ass. I was like, it took months. So I presume in boxing, it takes years to get good. I mean, how long does it take good to get to get good at boxing, Huff? <laughs> get good. <coughs> they call boxing a sweet science for a reason. I spent 13 years in it, and I never thought it was good. Really? It, it takes forever, man. Um, okay. But, all right, here's uh, one, you know here's the thing one, is the thing is about about uh, about Woodley. Woodley was preparing to box um, uh, with we call Tom Hardy, you know, uh, um, from the UFC. So they, he was <coughs> in, on track to box. So that's something Tony didn't know. So he's been training. He's been training boxing, but not the higher level of, of uh, Jake Paul. Jake Paul, and if people have not acknowledged it now, they should acknowledge that he is a legit boxer with legit skills not high level skills but you know he has legit skills you know and um and that's the fact he has legit skills and, and he's got great coaching you know as you know you know uh, len you know uh you know basically you know uh, jacob jacob and the you know bj uh, flores bj flores are there you know bj uh was a really good fighter himself he had a compiled the record of what 30 something and like three losses and his three losses were like world title shots so not, not hardly anybody's ever beat BJ, you know. So and then Jacob's been around the game a long time. So these guys have a lot of experience. And one thing those two guys have that a lot of other people uh, that are trying to get is unity. They're, they're, they're sticking together. And usually when it's not broken, don't try to fix it. So those guys aren't broken. So they're not trying to fix it. But like I said, uh, with that being said, the, the, the 500,000 uh, extra, that's a big motivator. The, the trilogy. It's another big motivator, and Woodley 
has stated on many occasions, don't put don't put a bounty on your head because <laughs> I'm coming. And and you know what? I'm sorry, but if, if it was I was in the same boat and, and I and I wasn't making as much money as you were, and all of a sudden I got an opportunity to knock you out and then make more money again because I got a rematch. That's a lot of motivation, man. And if I can control it mentally and not spend my wad and relax and go in there and do the job, you know, that's why I'm kind of like, I don't know, but I'm kind of, I'm kind of slightly going towards Pyron on this one only because if he does more activity, more activity and doesn't stop, you know, uh, I think he went and the motivator could be the money. And, and other, if it wasn't for the money, I might be thinking different, but I think that money might be the big motivator, you know, and he's talking about, I'm going to make a lot more money this year and, and he's motivated to do that. And, uh, you know, um, yeah. And I love the Tightens way Tyron your focus talks. tightens your focus, yeah. man. He's a great talker. Great talker. Look at the stoic Tony over here. Okay. Think about this. Take the best boxer in the world and have him box in bare feet. And his whole system is going to be a mess. That's why MMA boxing and regular boxing is so different because of the traction. You know, a lot a to the to the naked eye, it looks the same, but it isn't. It isn't. So a lot. Of, it the, the boxing the shoes make a big difference. I've seen it a zillion times. It truly is a different sport, even though to the naked eye it appears to be the same. Yeah, you're more ground, you get more power leverage with the shoes because you're, you're grounded to the ground, uh, you know, more so. You might be a little quicker with the feet, but, the, but you're not as balanced. And if you're not as balanced, you're not delivering as much force. Uh, those are all true facts. Great observation, Tony. Nobody even thinks about that. You have four-wheel drive car, you know, 60-inch wheels on your Mercedes. AMG, it's not going to go like it does with regular racing tires, right? It's going to be a little different. It's a different. So, so shoes, no shoes, gi, no gi, all these things make a difference. Oh, right. Hey, if you don't know, like, remember know when, Hoist Gracie, when Hoist Gracie fought with the gi in, in the UFC and, and, and he was out there with the whole thing and everybody was like, what's he doing? Oh, but yet that gi was the best weapon he could have used because all these guys are all sweaty and he used his gi to dry off the sweat and it was harder for those guys to slip away, you know, it's because it's like a towel wiping the sweat off of them and having great jujitsu to boot and knowing what the real fight world didn't know that they already knew. So, you know, I mean, what that's just it's, it's, it's common sense now, right? But back then it wasn't. Remember Art Jimerson, one handed boxing glove because. <laughs> 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 Now you ask Mark Jimerson now. <laughs> ask him now what he thinks about that idea. And he goes, man, what an idiot I was, right? I mean, because we didn't know. We didn't know. We thought we knew, but we didn't know. The Gracie's knew. Hey, let me tell you guys.